So yeah, let's start our architectural discussions meeting. We have several topics. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe Lena, you can start from your topic while we are waiting for guys to join. Uh, my topic, uh, like it for the final, really, for really quick. Yeah, about final keyword. There was a discussion in the community engineering Slack channel. I attached this link to this discussion and my question is uh, we have a static check in uh, magenta core right now it's phpmd but i will replace it with code sniffer it doesn't matter but it says that final keyword is prohibited in magenta and there is nothing about that in the technical guidelines so my question is maybe we should add this or somehow explain to the developers how to use it or uh, mm -hmm. why not to use it yeah I'm still trying to open what is the current recommendation so the current recommendation is not to use at all correct as far as i remember yes we had some discussions previously Recommendation is not to use because uh, we still want our code to be extensible. Uh, again, um, I, I believe it's implicitly mentioned that in interception section, which says that it is not possible to intercept final methods, signing methods, private methods, and so on. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is no reason to uh, mention it somewhere else specifically. The only concern I have regarding the sniff change is that it should be placed in some design namespace not just php or something besides that i um, propose to use php set instead of php md initially php what um, so it was initially provided in php md for no reason so what do you propose you propose to have it in php cs you Lena basically already did this as a php cs sniff but it's placed in not so good ways so i would suggest some namespace like design just to distinguish some coding style checks from design. Okay, so okay, so I, there is a I think yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the problem is right now, uh, like namespace doesn't matter, and it can be easily changed. My question is, uh, we need some source of truth for developers, so we can send, send the link and say here is technical guidelines and here is the statement that final is prohibited and we don't have it right now. So as I understand what Vlad mentioned is that uh, it's not about recommendations, even it's technical limitation of Magento. If we introduce final, it becomes impossible to pluginize the code. So maybe it should be somewhere in, uh, I don't know, plugins section. So we have it implicitly as we say that you write extensible code and also we uh, mentioned that final methods and classes cannot be intercepted, something like that. But you can know. have it in, as some like rule with uh, uh, number just for the reference in guidelines or something. Okay. We can probably add it. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so Uh -huh. Okay, so we, we can add it, I think. Uh, I, I will look at that. Okay, mm, let me see who else is on the call. Mm -hmm. And Tom Kopla. Uh, so you have a couple of the topics. One is about guidelines. Okay, guys, as you probably saw, we have uh, several updates in our guidelines. Uh, so, right now we will add additional one rule. I believe it's, it, we had it always, but maybe we didn't mention it explicitly. This is that we should not change uh, a state of accepted object, uh, which is subject uh, in our plugins. 
uh, as well as we should not change the state of uh, objects that we receive in our events. Uh, we need this rule to prevent uh, significant changes that may affect uh, not only uh, other plugins in chain, but overall application uh, stability. Also, I put an additional one rule regarding uh, identity for uh, service contracts. Uh, we need this. Uh, okay, all of you know that uh, we are going to support uh, port asynchronous calls to our system. Our, all our web APIs can be called asynchronously uh, starting uh, some time ago. So we have to be sure that uh, all of these uh, actions can be processed correctly. So it, it must be, uh, all of them must be independent. So it must to use uh, put method and they have to expect that a method can be called several times and uh, outcome of uh, these several calls should be the same as from a single call. Uh, this is connected to uh, technical guidelines. You may find this in pull requests, PDF docs. I can show you a number. Sorry, I'm showing it right now. On the screen. Okay. So, yeah, let's go through items, and uh, we have several reviewers. I just want to close this question. So, from my side, it's approved. Igor, Alex, do you have? Do you still have some concerns? I see that there is a command from Alex which is not addressed, as I understand. Uh, I, at least I don't see any resolution here. Can we resolve it now? Um. So let's go one by one. First one: plugins should not change the state of an intercepted object. Any? Any? Objections about this? Like from uh, it, it would be good. Uh, like my my question was like, what what should we do uh, with collection? What what uh, if if we would want you to never apply should this change to, subject to collection? Never should change our subject. You can write a you can write a plugin and cover our incoming arguments. You can cover outcoming arguments. But you never should change the subject because all other events expect to receive uh, the same subject. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have any more questions. Can you rephrase it? Though? I'm still confused. You discussed that everybody's confused. In plugin, we have only one intercepted object, which is subject. <laughs> I understand that you're saying it, but uh, if people are confused, can you rephrase it? Somehow? Put subject here instead of object. I okay, I will put this explanation. <clears throat> Next one. A replication layer. Uh, okay, this you just might. Uh, Quick question: Should it uh, should it be merged uh, with item about data object? We we would just uh, have a generic item that uh, object state should not be changed in the plugin. Yeah, this is a little bit different. Uh, with uh, data object, this is data transfer object, which we uh, we expect that it has to be uh, it has to be serialized at some moment, uh, transferred through the network. So we don't want to put any additional application logic in, uh, on it, even wrappers, because uh, you know as soon we will have this wrapper, we will have to uh, replicate it uh, on different uh, points of our, uh, our application. In case we have uh, several instances which communicate between each other, so we will have to uh, make sure that we have uh, the same plugins and wrappers on both sides. So this is. This is different rule, rules. Okay, maybe then we need to provide uh, more examples on each of the items because I would imagine to a lot of uh, developers it would not be clear 
Why is there two items uh, uh, regarding plugins? One for that object. Why so? It's it's pretty straightforward rule. Don't put a plugin for a getters on a data object as as well as setters, and so don't change the state of subject. So, so Igor, you mentioned uh, four point three. Yes. Uh, yeah, but it's different. It says that you should not even add plugins. Yeah. Yeah, and in this case, you okay. say that you don't add plugins, but. You may have a plugin, for instance, to print uh, to to print some some state, but <laughs> you should not change. Uh, okay, okay. Object. I I provide an example. For instance, you can may uh, you you can change uh, item class for a collection. There will be significant change of logic and uh, everything will be broken. Not only you know, okay. the plugins change, uh, even in, for 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 client message. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's look. Uh -huh. Okay. So this one uh, you added exception. Uh, okay. So this one that didn't change. Next one. So you added a layer must not depend on on layer that invokes it. Example: a service that manages products must not invoke component that manages admin notification messages because message manager is a particular example of presentation layer. Uh, Alex. Uh, do you, do, you have, do you still have concerns about the about Nicole? Yeah, I believe it was not changed after my comment. So what do you want to change? So to me, at least, this example doesn't seem clear because uh, we say layer must not depend on layers that invokes it, and then mm -hmm. we give some example which operates with presentation layer and doesn't say anything about like which layer is dependent mm -hmm. on which layer and I don't know, to me, to me, it doesn't look clear. If it looks clear to everybody else. Yeah, for me, it's clear that uh, presentation layer communicates to service contract layer, not the other direction. So it's always true that we have a presentation layer, we have a business logic layer, and we, we have a da data access layer uh, only in this order. So. In case your service contracts has a dependency on your presentation layers, ACA blocks, uh, definitely your uh, your your service contracts has has a mistake. Yeah, so I, I believe example is not clear, and also the the statement itself um, looks like we should just say follow layer architecture, provide reference to diagram. And the diagram should show direction of uh, so allowed you, communication. You uh, you want uh, to more detailed examples for this one? The main purpose of this point uh, to prevent cases when somebody initiate a state and expect to receive the state inside, uh, for instance, initiate a state in a block and expect to receive a result of the state in service contract. Uh, yeah, I, I understand what you're trying to do here, like what you're trying to prevent, but the phrase in itself doesn't seem clear to me, especially yeah. layers that invokes it, like must not depend on layers that invokes it. I believe you should just say lower layers must not depend on higher layers, and that's it, and uh, it give, give an example. In both direction. Uh, you but should why, why your presentation, yeah, but the question, like why your domain layer should depend on your presentation? It must never depend on presentation. You, and same as persistence. Be... Persistence must, must not depend on the main layer, yeah. right? Yep, exactly, exactly. It's uh, as the same as as uh, uh, your uh, your domain layer uh, should not depend on uh, low level knowledge, for instance, or tra transaction state or something like this. So uh, no. this rule uh, always will work in in both directions. There is one problem with this rule: lower layer never knows uh, which layer it calls it. I mean, it, 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 uh, like the a method it doesn't know which other method calls it, so you don't we really still, have that knowledge. Uh, we are still allowing to build the plugins uh, for uh, for low level entries like a, a resource model save, and uh, by using this plugin. We still uh, allows to uh, call something like a service contract to receive some data. In this case, uh, service contract, which uh, as a result was called uh, through the lower lower layer, 
should not uh, should not depend on uh, uh, even if this is lower level, not not a presentation layer. layer. Right. So what I'm saying is that it should be rephrased uh, that lower layer should not uh, depend. As well as higher layer. Yeah, actually, there, there is one more uh, thing that we should like to discuss. There are two uh, standard approaches of layering. Uh, one is you can talk only to one layer below you, and second, you can talk to any layer below you. I believe you want to have only one layer below you, right? So we, uh, we probably yeah. should specify it somewhere as well. Because it's not clear from, from, from here that, I mean, direct possible direction and number of layers you can skip is not specified here and it's not clear but i think anton is talking about different direction of dependency so he says effectively at least if i understand correctly this rule it says you must not depend on the layer above you yes, yes. yes. and what i'm suggesting is to additionally say that you must not skip layers you can depend on layer below you but only talk to immediate uh, neighbor you cannot talk you cannot skip layers when you talk uh, when, when you fetch something from lower layers okay it probably but okay so i propose to rephrase it something like this you probably need to talk to the writers to see how better to phrase it uh, so it's readable. Uh, but this is my understanding of what we want to achieve. That uh, it covers the case that we should not depend on the higher level layer, and it covers the case that it shouldn't depend on like very on a few layers lower. Exactly. Okay, so if it works, then this can be a suggested uh, uh, option and example. Uh, you probably we can keep the, the same example, no? Okay. Maybe refresh a little bit. Maybe uh, have to add some fancy diagram for for this rule to make. Yeah, sure but how to know what is lower? If I call some layer from my application, how do I know it's lower or not? So we need a diagram. Yeah, we definitely need the diagram and. Uh, good example if my server uh, try to send a mail it uh, will call some service to send a mail it's in the service we will call to a presentation layer to build the uh, email so for me it's not clear is a presentation layer that call it from the uh, service uh, is okay or not probably not so it's okay, but not directly. So it, uh, here I have a concern regarding uh, even not skipping queries, but contacting queries not immediate to our one. It, well, it sounds to me like a violation of Demeter law. So I would formulate it as just to uh, like immediate layer. So yeah, it's how it's described right now. Directly, probably below it. Okay, so what uh, in your example, I don't know what means it calls presentation layer. You mean that it uses template or what happens? Yeah, it's, it's used templates, it uses blocks to build the mail. It has its own system of templates, I believe. So, but from what's the difference? Is presentation uh, layer or not? Uh, this is uh, not, this is email layer, email template layer. Which was designed but to it's, be called it's in the still presentation design. layer. Actually, it can in Amazonian applications can call direct to block. So it can. I don't know if we have really good design of this uh, emails. So it, it makes sense for what how it should be or what are the options for this case. Um, so. Uh, my purpose to, for example, if you uh, introduce this uh, and someone will uh, ask about this example, how I need to answer? Is it okay or not? 
You know the answer. You know the answer. Okay, so you have an email template. I don't know, it's fine, probably fine to use it. But if you, for example, have um, maybe, maybe just I don't know. I think if you start from a service, then probably it should not be a presentation layer. Yeah, you still can have templates. It's still, it's probably still fine, unless you, for example, use something like sessions. Um, Looks like that's your application not properly designed because uh, in your service contracts you have to uh, manipulate uh, with uh, more abstract uh, stuff like uh, email render, text renderer and other. In this case, you will have another layer which will be a more lower layer which, when you will have a, such uh, uh, things like uh, temp email templates and whatever, but uh, never directly combine this stuff inside of your service contract. Is this clear? Mm, not yet, because uh, uh, it may be clear for me, but... Yeah, so I, 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 I'm asking directly, clear for you, uh, we will be able to figure out good example how to communicate <laughs> to other people. Okay. Great. Okay, so can we move on to the next one? So here, Anton, you'll need to rephrase and uh, add uh, and a diagram. Yeah, thanks to diagram. Yeah, so by the way, we should, we should have diagram somewhere. We we just need to find link to it. Like we have different diagrams with layer and already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would be great. Next one: configuration of the presentation layer must be declared in the corresponding. This includes events and plugins that customize the presentation layer to be combined with 3.4. All modular presentation layer DI settings should be stored in. Yeah, makes sense. That makes sense. But it probably should not be in dependency injection. Okay, yeah, it should be. Yeah, it should be here. Yeah, so we, this was just a topic move uh, because it was in an appropriate place. Okay, I believe I can remove it. Okay, so we have like 6.1, 6 I believe, is uh, generic rules for application layers. Probably it should be in 6.1. Uh, presentation layer. Okay, so yeah, think how to combine it and let's combine, let's remove that rule, it's, uh, which is too specific. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. A service contract should be an idempotent method. Mm -hmm. Objections here, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I have a question. Um, are you talking about all kinds of Methods, or we're talking about only like those which can, like, which should be idempotent because post oh. should not be idempotent, right? So maybe we don't by default. It. I mean, we can do it at idempotent, but we will, yeah, we will, but, but but maybe we don't need a post method for a new service contract. Uh, as soon we we have a asynchronous uh, service contracts. We can assume that uh, one service contract can be called several times with the same uh, arguments. So we have to guarantee that uh, no matter how many calls we will receive, uh, state of our application will be correct. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that we should uh, get uh, get away from post, or are we good with post, but it should be done for that call? Uh, in my understanding, uh, all of our new services must be put or delete. Uh, I would say this requires separate discussion because it wasn't discussed with anybody. Uh, we already uh, implemented uh, asynchronous uh, web APIs. We had to discuss it previously because right now we have uh, this conflict. Uh, no, no, no. So uh, current right current web APIs, they, they, they still have post and they still have put and they, yeah, there are two and operation and modes like synchronous why, and asynchronous. Why? 
why do we why do we need uh, uh, why do we say that we only need put not post? If I'm missing uh, point, sorry. Yes, like there are two two ways, and I don't know, maybe that's incorrect according to Rust rules, but you can still have post and have it in the product if you if you provide the uh, ID, like if you can use UUID, for example. Yeah, but in, in this case, uh, it will work uh, exactly as the same as a put. But why the same put? I thought it should modify, no? Uh, it can create on entities. Hmm? Statement doesn't make sense to me at all. I thought service contract implies it could be anything, right? Like that could be a get to get some state, mm -hmm. or you could be creating a new state, like you know, mm -hmm. put or you know, I mean post or put. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they seem like orthogonal concepts. Uh, which ones? I mean, like so the concept of a service contract mm -hmm. and whether whether it should be item potent or not. Uh, can be both. But why point. we are saying that we want to have it item potent because. Uh, we want to support retries. It's not even about synchronous or unsynchronous. It's because we we will be moving towards towards uh, service services, and then we need to make sure that you can retry. Um, how how do you retry creating a product if it's not an important? So usually, well, okay. <laughs> um, and again, you can create if you always provide ID for this. Yeah. You, you and actually, actually uh, my question of still about email. How to send email in Magenta if our mentor is in the patent? You, you probably cannot. So yes. Uh, it really depends on your implementation. You know, that as soon as your uh, implementation uh, uh, is this possible to identify uh, is this message sent or not? It's not. Yeah, a... I, I believe if there are possibility to make all methods in the content, the guys who think about the rest of the application do not introduce any don't in the, in the content methods. So I feel that there are always cases where methods will be not in the content. Okay, we have shoot here. For example. What would be example where the method can't be idempotent? For example, method is that call to external system that is not idempotent. Why? Why is it? Why is it not idempotent? If if I have an operation with same arguments and I know that that operation I uh, was already performed, depending on, and I know that a call to external system is not in the input and then I don't do a second call if I already know that the call was performed. Yeah, but how to you, uh, it's okay. For distributed system, you cannot know that this call to external system was done. It's why? Not possible. You, I know why. Uh, no, yeah. you can. Special implementation. No, it's your implementation. Uh, yeah, you know that calls to your yeah, system is done, but you don't know that uh, the call to external system is done. So definitely on next call you can skip the method. But for example, okay. I think for for simplicity we can say that uh, our implementation is, can be impotent if an external call is not impotent. It's uh, uh, it's a simplification, and we allow that. Allow uh, allow uh, uh, external calls like Im sending a second email to a customer. If the email by nature is a dampotent, which like it doesn't change data, that or it doesn't request for different actions from customer, it should be okay. So, so I propose what? to move it to separate discussion when we have a concrete, uh, I don't know, case. Uh, right now, this is what we want to achieve. We put shoot here, so there can be some exceptions, and we know we, we at least know that we want to achieve this. When we have a, a specific case, we can uh, discuss how to implement it, and if there is no, there are no options, we can return to guidelines and update accordingly. Okay. okay. Does it make sense? Yep. Next configuration. Okay. And by, by the way, we already have, I think, we already have a impotence in operations for two years. 
in guidelines or, or you mean in implementation? technical guidelines i think we already have the statement uh, that oh i I, I i've searched for this one maybe i <laughs> i misspell this word but by no no, there is. Uh, I mean, I'm uh, I'm okay with having it for service contract separately. It's not a problem. My my question is, if we if we have it, let me, let me check. We don't have it. I'm checking it right on the screen. We don't have, unless somebody made a typo in this word. <laughs> I can guarantee it, but we don't have it. Okay, good. So I think we were just discussing, and that's good that we are adding it. Yeah. Okay, also, last. Uh, okay. It will be good to have in the content for uh, one task and any task. Yeah, exactly. This is good point. I will, I, I will update. Uh, I will update this pull request to include your your source. Thank you. What, what did you say? I didn't hear. Uh, the same uh, to make the same statement for cron. For cron. Hmm. For all type of events, I believe. For events? What do you say? Uh, and events, yeah. yeah. For okay. Uh, okay. You know, for me, it looks like uh, we can put it in multiple other places, but if Chrome would rely on, so, okay. Next one. Events should not change the state of observable objects. Similar to what plugins. <coughs> okay, we have a plugins for this. <laughs> And guys, uh, you know that uh, mutable state of objects. This is main reason of uh, incompatibility between uh, different extensions. I know that this is uh, hard to achieve, but uh, in general, I believe all of us uh, want uh, to implement this rule. So we have a plugins for uh, more advanced cases. Uh, why should we recommend to use the events to change the object state? Because you can ch can change can change anything uh, everywhere. As a result, your extension will not be compatible, and your code will not be compatible with other system which expect that the system is behaves uh, in a regular way. Okay, any questions? My questions are why we need event at all. Uh, this is good question, uh, but uh, uh, I believe that uh, we, <laughs> uh, this is not that we can do. Uh, that's not we can change right now, but at least we can recommend to do not change the state in event okay. at all right now. They like you, plan. Thank you. Okay. Any other concerns? If not. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I agree with this. It just very often I get asked, why do we have uh, why do we have rules that are not achievable or uh, are not present in system today? I think historically events were always advertised as a way where you can modify the state of your object. Maybe like. Some people understand them as, uh, as the ways to modify objects. Some didn't, but they are very often used for that, in, including our system. Right? You yeah. add some fields to the uh, to the to the object that is passed. You add the uh, uh, you modify state, and, and now yeah. we add this rule. I'm I'm I completely agree with this rule. It just we have to all agree that we understand what uh, what it means. Okay, so are all these cases, for all these cases where we modify the state, uh, is there another way to achieve what's necessary, or is it just there is no other way? So, my understanding, so how we, what's better way to modify, uh, what was a better way to modify things, and let me think about it a bit. So, I call a method, right? Uh, so usually when we when we have this event, we have this events before something happens, like, for example, before an entity is saved, right? It's persistent. Mm -hmm. So we send an event, we trigger an event called before, save before, right? And we send that entity to that event. And mm -hmm. people change something there. 
but today we have plugins in a plugin you can pluginize the resource model uh, the 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 actual persistence method and you can modify argument so you can have immutable so you can provide new uh, you know so you you accept argument you can create new object and uh, have immutable behavior mm -hmm. so uh, having immutable behavior is better uh, and uh, using decoration approach and uh, modifying arguments uh, in, in, in a decorator or plugin. Like, by the is way, it, we, yeah. is it also the case that in some places you cannot have plugins, or is it just? A... I'm sure. I'm sure that there is a scenario where where there is only event and it's very inconvenient and the API class is not API and and stuff and stuff and stuff. There, are, I'm sure that there are cases. Yeah, but this is technical guidelines. This is uh, our direction. So we, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, what we have to achieve. But yeah, and uh, it's good to communicate to community that if you see in Magento code the place where you cannot uh, do not uh, um, uh, do not change state in the server, just create pull request to replace this um, is another uh, class. That you will be using the site to extend uh, this point somehow and provide this all like pull request to our system, or just create bug presence. And we will do, do it. Yeah. This will be great in case this will work in this way. It will be really, really application involvement. Okay, yeah. so what I propose to add here, what uh, some recommendation about uh, what to do instead. Would it Makes sense, or we don't want guidelines. Use plugins, uh, change arguments. Uh, uh, this Can rule uh, plays in uh, pair with rule. Don't change the state of uh, subject in interceptor. So, yep, you have enough instruments to do something. You can substitute arguments for function. You can substitute uh, output of function. So, why should you uh, have to change the state of object? Uh, yes. We have other uh, other clients of this object uh, who expect that state will be the same. Yes, I understand it, and I, I believe all people in this call understand it. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, should we add some more explanation uh, here in the guidelines? For example, that you should use plugins instead, where you can uh, you can create a new object or whatever the recommendation. Uh, yeah, it it's makes really sense. I, I I don't see that don't, don't see how we can uh, achieve this because each particular example may have a different solution and I I, I don't want to recommend anything with this uh, point because uh, you know depends on a situation solution can be different from uh, changing your application to build extension an extension point uh, to use a uh, to use a plugin so there are no no silver bullets uh, have to uh, replace all uh, events which uh, change uh, object states okay, okay let's let's keep it as this and uh, then let's see if we need to modify something if you'll have more questions maybe yeah. you just should have uh, some blog post or or something that uh, goes into more details. Yeah, uh, this is a good idea. Blog post. This is this is good way how to have to show a possible possible ways how to solve uh, mm -hmm. such problem. Okay. 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 Uh, good. So good great. Idea. We can we go have, forward. Yeah, we have this one. Yes. For compatibility guidelines. Okay, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have uh, some updates in our backward compatibility guidelines. So right now, as uh, adding a uh, uh, throwing a new exception type inside of your code will be backward compatible change because uh, we don't know uh, who already uh, uh, who already calls your method and how this uh, call already handled it. So as by serving new exception, you potentially may break a logic of other extension. Is this clear? And it includes adding new, adding an exception. If there was no exception and it's added, it means you are adding uh, throwing new type of an exception. 
is this, uh, also including a new exception or a new type of exception? Mm -hmm. So uh, each change uh, like, like this will be treated as a as a major change. I believe major. major. Mm -hmm. Prefer to make major. Because, because, yeah, because uh, exception you uh, you throw uh, you throw throw uh, will not be catched properly. As a result, application will be broken. Application scenario will be broken. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe we have uh, in technical guidance the states that your code should not your business logic should not depend on the exception. Maybe I misunderstood it. Not biz business logic. Business logic means that when you try to replace if with uh, exception handling. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, still, you may rely uh, on exception uh, exceptions from uh, methods that you invoked. Because yeah, depends yeah. on on this exception, you. you you may have a decision to uh, reduce this call or I don't know, sh uh, shut down resources that you are using. And also in guidelines, we have uh, a rule that uh, uh, all exceptions should be handled in, in the current layer. And okay. So my, be... my concern is that for me, major is nice that we not may, we definitely will bro break all exceptions. It's major. If yeah. you may change, it's definitely not major change. It's as as mass as minor changes. There are no state uh, like a half working uh, application. Uh, so this is why this is major. Yeah, no, uh, definitely all changes can break anything. Yeah, but, but uh, adding optional uh, adding. Uh, you know, argument will not do uh, the same uh, effect uh, like adding a new exception. Uh, uh, may, may, for example, if uh, someone create uh, object deal with construct, definitely can break the code. So, so we have a simple rule, we will need to find it, but uh, major change is a change in API, minor change in is change in SPI. So if you are extending something, you should depend on minor version. And when we change something which impacts extensibility, uh, we should uh, increase minor version. If we change API, so if somebody calls this method and the behavior changes, this is major. That's very simple rule that we have. We cannot predict how many people we impact and based on that do uh, major or minor version bump. It's very like uh, unclear rule, I would say. So this, uh, this change adding an exception uh, modifies API. Exception is part of the method API. That's why it's major change. Yeah. I think it it makes sense, uh, but I would also uh, clarify that it would also be applicable to non-API classes that are used by API classes. Because if you use if you have a collaborator in in your implementation, and even though you don't modify API class and just modify the collaborator, and uh, API class doesn't handle a uh, wrap. Uh, uh, interaction with that collaborator in a try catch, then you will have the same problem. I think it's, I would not put it here, it's more about general way of how you handle exceptions. Like, uh, I don't know, if you have a public method, and what do you mean under collaborator? You mean another class, not, or do you mean private Depends. method? Dependency. Method. Yes, dependency. For another object. In this case, uh, this method is, is responsible for handling all the exceptions from, from that class, from the dependency. And dependency should also declare uh, declare which exceptions it can throw 
to a client code that can catch it and uh, throw different exception or whatever. Yeah, I, I agree. It just uh, may not be obvious uh, by by this rule. If we are, if we are going to add that, uh, you cannot add new exceptions in the API class. Then we probably should also say that uh, it also implies to uh, collaborators of this API class. Yeah, what I'm saying, I would divide it into two different things because if you have these two different things, you can combine it in mind and understand how you should implement it. So one thing is that. Uh, it's just it's just simple rule. If you throw a new new type of exception, it's breaking change. That's very simple because you have no and ors or something in this statement. It's just one statement, simple. Uh, and then a separate separate statement would be about how you handle exceptions. And we we probably we, we have several we have even full full section about this, right? Exceptions may, must not be handled in the same function. Must be either um, if function A calls function B, this exception must be either processed by function A or declared by the throws annotation. So like you have a chain reaction. If you follow all, all guideline principles, you will you will uh, come to the same conclusion that it's a, it is a breaking change. Okay. Yes, it's definitely breaking change. And I believe if we decide that uh, it's major breaking change, all our next releases will be breaking changes. Maybe. Not maybe, definitely. But they. Because, uh, well, yeah. no, the main reason is because we don't have uh, like for all our layers exception and interfaces for this exception right now we are working to build uh, a good static test to cover this is so yeah right now we have this problem and we are, we are going to solve this uh, Again. in close future i believe yeah the problem still exists for extension developers for system integrator it exists there here it's just vocalized. We just described that this is a problem, yeah. so people can take it into account. So if we don't say that, doesn't mean it's it doesn't exist, right? Yeah. We just realized a problem. Yeah, but for example, I use call and I don't catch any exception from this call. Uh, you don't <laughs> break yeah. it, but uh, when I use uh, because it's. An, I don't think uh, interesting in any exception. So if exception call is okay. And then you don't follow guidelines. What, yeah. what do you, you are not interested in exceptions. You should either declare all these exceptions or you should handle them. Because yeah. otherwise, I, all your client code knows how to use your methods. Yeah, I just declare <laughs> that uh, the, uh, my method is so. So if you declare it, then if uh, the method that you use throws new type of exception, you have to declare it as well. And it means that you are you are throwing new type of exception. Yeah, I understood it, but uh, the new rule you make uh, all uh, changes as an exception. So if it call new type of exception, if you you don't break my code, but I require it to. Reason, so, just new year. So, so nothing breaks the code. Uh, the application may be broken. It's not that you can break yeah, the but, code. Yeah, uh, but so uh, actually uh, we don't apply. Andrei, Andrei. I believe we don't apply our rule on uh, functionality of our code. It's just on software. The same situation. Software. The same situation. You, you have your extension which never calls. Uh, which never calls uh, catalog product save method. And always calls only get, and we change a save uh, signature. Okay, your your code still will uh, will work, but all other extension will not. So this is not a relevant uh, example. I believe that changes of a API class uh, signature is a significant one for a major, but still your ex your extension will work because your uh, uh, your your example uh, does not uh, work with a product repository save.
Okay, so what what uh, what do you want to do? I still don't understand. Do you want to remove this rule or what? What's the point? Uh, my, my concern only about major changes. Well, this is I, <laughs> this is major. What's the definition of an API method API? It includes arguments. It includes names, type of the arguments, and exceptions and return value. Exception is a part of return. A part of kind the of public return. API. Why do we discuss it? We we are not talking about uh, probability of breaking the extension. There is some probability. That's why exception is part of the API. But we don't know what's the probability. Maybe we have APIs which are not used by any extension. Okay, I propose to move on. So what we have, we have those exceptions, but uh, you added another rule here about dependencies. You didn't discuss it. Yeah, another rule regarding composer. I put I put additional uh, section into this document, which is uh, composer dependency, and uh, I believe that adding of composer dependency for an existing model is a breaking change, because after a uh, client, uh, well, I don't know, partner installed a version. Uh, exists a huge probability that uh, some of models will be disabled. All of you know that's how many blog posts uh, and tweets we have regarding uh, the fact how to disable some uh, Magento extensions and code. As a result, I believe that uh, new, our new code in patch releases uh, should not depend on uh, should not depend on uh, existing released models because we. Should, we, we cannot guarantee that this model uh, is already uh, enabled and uh, after a patch upgrade client will uh, a client instance uh, will be in workable state so uh, this is still safe to add a new model and depends on this new model but in case you want to uh, add a dependency for an existing model into your new model or, <clears throat> uh, for an existing model, uh, this will be a breaking change. For instance, if uh, you identify that, okay, your wish list uh, has, uh, has to depend on MSRP model, you, you, you cannot uh, introduce this dependency in backward compatible way because you cannot guarantee that uh, MSRP model is enabled uh, at the particular instance as a result uh, uh, and as a result of update you will not break a client instance by introducing this dependence. Again, so you mentioned that uh, there is some uh, depending on a new module is fine, but depending on an existing module is not fine, correct? Yep, yep, because uh, you will uh, deploy this new model with a new code. Uh, so this uh, new model cannot be uh, disabled somehow. Can you, double, uh, can you double check with tech writers about this from me, from sounds and correct? It should be introducing a new dependency. Yeah, true. On, true. I can explain this to uh, technical writers and think how we can re rephrase this. But definitely, we saw for several times such such cases when um, we are putting some uh, uh, some dependency uh, into existing models um, modules for uh, for uh, for a, for existing modules. As a result, uh, it is impossible to upgrade a client. Because uh, depending what, what do you mean by on existing? Existing, uh, that's, uh, uh, excuse me, released, previously released models. So, uh, for instance, if your uh, wish list model uh, does not uh, depend on uh, MSRP model, you cannot say that uh, your wish list model will uh, will depends on a MSRP model in patch release because you don't know if this MSRP model exists uh, at the client instance or not. Instance or not. Yeah. This is okay to introduce such such changes for minor uh, minor versions, I believe, but not for patch. Yes, it, it means that you cannot, for example, in 
2.3.1 uh, introduce new models. Uh, like you can HBL. introduce you can introduce a new models, but you cannot introduce a dependency on the previously no. released models. Yeah, that I, I mean that you cannot uh, release a new model that depends on existing. Yep. Uh, uh, you can release a new models which depends on existing one models, but you cannot release already uh, released models with a new dependency uh, to another released models. But I still have the same problem. If you, I have disabled model, I cannot install new models. Yep. Uh, oh, but that's uh, uh, in the case. Uh, Well, so, our so our behavior right now of installation is that uh, new module is being enabled by default, correct? Yeah, but, yeah. but actually, yeah. it's not only about installation, the same problem just with resolving dependency because your current model can depend on exact version uh, yeah, yeah. of models, and you, new installed model can depend on exact different versions of I, models, I, I, and it will be a conflict of models. I understand your question, and this is this is a little bit other scenario because uh, for a, for for a new models, you just uh, check that uh, your version is not satisfied, and you cannot install it, and this is okay. You do not introduce a new behavior with existing models. This is worse situa worse situation because you you already have it installed, so uh, exists the probability that you will break an existing one. Um, maybe you are right, and we, we should not introduce even in new models for a patch releases at all. I uh, I would rather support this statement instead of changing the, the existing one. So for patch releases, I I, I believe uh, the only we, what we have to do this is uh, change by uh, uh, fix issues, uh, but not to release a new uh, a new features. Okay, this is not something that we can do right now, but. Uh, we can uh, let's discuss applying this uh, this use cases. Okay, just to make sure that it's covered, maybe we need to add something to this statement. Clarify. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, I believe we have one minute left. Yes, and that's all that we have for this meeting. Uh, Anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, then that's it. Uh, there are some notes. Uh, so, Anton, you have a few tasks to update uh, that propose uh, that uh, update of guidelines, and this one a little bit. Yeah, build a fancy diagram for layers. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's uh, it's in the. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you all. Then that's all for today. Uh, see you next time. See you guys. Bye. Thank you. Um, just coming back to the retry example, if I were to look at a pure REST, and I don't know, with Magento service contracts, mm -hmm. mesh well with REST semantics, mm -hmm. the way I see it, and I consider these all kind of orthogonal concepts. Um, uh, when a client makes a call to a server, it doesn't matter whether it's internal or external, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's only one corner case where you don't really know if the server did the work. Uh, that is when the let's say network socket goes up, right? Because you've got a reset. In all other cases, you'll at least get an HTTP response back. Mm -hmm. So if you got a full guarantee from the server that, oh, a five, let's say 500, you know that server could not complete it or there was some issue or whatever, client can safely send a non item portal request again. That's a guarantee that the server should implement. Uh, okay. So now whether the the server internally can have retry logics. It's completely oblivious to the client. The mm -hmm. server will try its best when it gets a request. Uh, but it, don't, it doesn't. Let's say, let's say, that, let's say it's a non item important request. Let's say it's a post or a post, yeah. right? Uh, well, uh, let's assume post, for example. Yes. So, so, regardless of server implementation, client has to look at the response code to tell was that non item important? Essentially, the server transfers that problem to the client. 
in whether the client should retry or not because mm -hmm. server will indicate very clearly that I fail if unless you see a 200 okay from my mm -hmm. service I have guaranteed I'm going to take that it doesn't matter whether we do it asynchronously in the background or whether we do it synchronously. I don't think it's even the role yeah, yeah. that asynchronous is. So. Yeah, I know. So I guess from a, from a from a REST perspective, if a server is giving for a non-item port request 200 response, mm -hmm. server is guaranteeing that okay, yes. it is done. You, uh, you as a, but if it's a, an error response of some sort, right? It is expected for the client to return. That is what the yes, server guarantee. Yes, but the, again, there are two cases here. So if everything goes okay, then there are no problems. Yes. We don't need to right. carry on about right. the impotency. But if something fails, so what can fail? As you mentioned, you, the server may return error. Which means which means that uh, it, it is left up to the client to retry. That yes, case. but again, it could fail in the middle of the operation and it could save. Ah, so this is this is a server and, problem. What I'm yes, saying is that but, you, but if you is, fail, but you there is that. no way for the server now to distinguish if it's not a dumpotent. What I mean with, uh, about the dumpotency, my vision is that uh, uh, the interface should, like in very simple words, how a developer can implement it. Interface should require should require a, a unique ID. By if if a client provides ID. Even for creation of the object, ah, so of the entity. which is which is not what I would call a pure REST. Then. It's not. I, I agree. You can implement that. That, that can way. be. Yeah. That's why I was asking uh, whether it's pure REST. Mm -hmm. Pure REST is very clear that if you want to really look at the semantics, it's, it's, think of it as like database, right? When you're doing an insert. You, you database gives you the next increment ID. Uh, you don't, it, you can't only, make assumptions. You cannot. The application. You, no, no. Your application cannot make assumptions that. Oh yeah, I just saw. Oh, the counter today is at 200. Yes, but I can assume that my next insert that I do is going to be 201. Right, you cannot make that assumption. Right, that's, that's yeah. why we should use a unique ID, it's UUID. So and the client also... should generate it. Because if you're, as soon as you become start relying on auto increments, you cannot. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so even if you're using a unique ID generator in a pure REST semantics, client, yes, should, I... not, client should not be generating IDs. It is a server's responsibility to give you because if you look at the REST uh, mm -hmm. semantics, you know it's, it's everything about documents, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you use client is completely oblivious. Client is saying, okay, I'm I'm making a non-item important request here. I'm doing a post. I want to create a new document. The document mm -hmm. could be product or whatever it is in this context, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it is server's response to say, yes, I got your new document, and here is the ID of mm -hmm. that new document. Now, for all subsequent calls, you have to present this ID to you know make changes to it, delete it. Yes. So in a pure REST semantics, client is not yes, even it can be. in client's own documentation, whatever, let's say JSON or whatever payload that it has, client can have its own ID mechanism for reference.